Good afternoon and welcome. We're going to begin this afternoon with number 542. Come, now is the time to worship. Number 542. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you always. Amen. My friends, as we gather, it's wonderful to be with you, for we come together to be in the presence of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And in today's gospel, we see the power of Jesus. We see his understanding and love for all people. So as we gather, let us take a moment in silence as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the light to our world, leading us to the kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come to us with an understanding heart, offering us your healing. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bless us with your very presence here at this altar today. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Praise 
us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of baptism chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. He fashioned all things that they might have been, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also, for that you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that, through, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor 
so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as you, as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there be an equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed against him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all she had. <clears throat> Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing against you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue's official house arrived and said, your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, and the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. He put them all out. He took along with the child's father and mother and those who were with them 
and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said, Talitha kum, which means, little child, I say to you, rise. The girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. <coughs> At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that they should give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, I'd like to tell you a story about this little boy. He was walking down a country road. It was a beautiful day, light puffy clouds floating along, the sky was blue. He could hear frogs and turkeys and all kinds of animals. And he was having a glorious time walking along. He was kicking a can, just looking around. And then he came upon this driveway. It was a long driveway. And at the end where he was, there was a sign that delighted him. It said, puppies for sale. He smiled and said, I want a puppy. So he ran up that driveway and he knocked on the door of that farmer's house. And the farmer came out and said, how can I help you, son? He said, I want to look at your puppies. He said, well, come on around to the back with me. So they walked around to the back and the farmer called out toward the barn, the mother dog, Dolly, Dolly, come on out. And the mother dog comes running out, and right behind her are four little balls of fur, just trying to keep up with her, running and having a glorious time as well. But then, before they got to the little boy, the little boy noticed another little bur a ball of fur coming out of the barn. This one was wobbling a little bit, not able to keep up with the other little puppies. Once it got there, the other ones were jumping on him. The little boy said, I want that one, the one that's not walking so well. The farmer bent over and said, oh, son, you don't want that dog. You see, it won't be able to run in the fields with you and play and have lots of fun. The little boy said, no, that's the one I want. Even though it's crippled, let me show you something. And the little boy pulled up his pant leg. And on either side of his leg was a steel brace that was connected to a special shoe. And he looked up at the farmer and he said, you see, I don't run too well either. And this little puppy, he needs someone who can understand. The farmer had a tear well up in his eye. And he said, okay. You can have this one, as he picked up the little puppy that was crippled, and he handed it to the little boy. The little boy reached in his pocket and said, how much is it? I'll pay you for it. The farmer said, oh no, it's free. There's no price for love. My friends, isn't that how Jesus treats us? Isn't that what he does for us? There's no one who understands us any better than Jesus Christ. We see that illustrated in today's gospel. Jairus, a synagogue official, comes to Jesus, comes running to him and says, my daughter is about to die. Can you come touch her and make her better? Jesus immediately understands him and says, yes, I will come with you. And on the way there, other people come and they say, it's too late. Your daughter has already died. Don't bother the teacher anymore. But Jesus turns to Jairus, again, understanding the pain that he must have heard and felt when they said his daughter died. And Jesus says, have faith. Everything will be fine. And they began to go toward the house. People began to ridicule Jesus. What are you doing? She's already dead. There's nothing that you can do. But Jesus takes Jairus and goes into the house. And he speaks a word, Talitha kum. He speaks this word saying, little girl, rise. And immediately we see the power of Jesus. 
No one else can do this. No one else ever has. No one else ever will. Only the power of Jesus can say to someone who is dead, rise, and they rise. It's important that we know what Jesus said. The word he used, Talitha Kum, St. Mark the Evangelist wanted us to know that. Why is that word so important? Because it's Aramaic. Most of the gospel, in fact, just about all of it, is written in the Greek language. But Mark used the Aramaic here because it must have touched his heart. And he wanted us here today, and whoever read that gospel passage, to know the exact words that Jesus said in Aramaic. Talitha kum, little girl, rise. It was a special moment for St. Mark. Most of the rest of his gospel was indeed written in Greek. But not that. He wanted you to know the power of Jesus Christ and how understanding and loving he is. God himself, with his ultimate power, saying these words, made a dead girl rise because he understood what Jairus the official was going through. Do you ever feel like no one understands you? Do you ever feel like you're going through something that is individual to you? A sickness, a sadness, a hurt, a pain? And you might wonder, who understands? Who knows what I'm going through at this moment? It's very difficult. There is someone who does. That is Jesus Christ. He understands exactly what you're going through. And you can turn to him just as Jairus did, and say, Lord, help me. And Jesus will say, I understand. And he will help you because he is powerful. He raised people from the dead. He walked on water. He healed people. He can do anything. He is unlimited in power. And you are his children. You are his brothers and sisters, and he loves you immensely. He hasn't forgotten you. He understands you and is with you. If you ever feel misunderstood, if you are ever in need of understanding, if you are ever going through a difficult time, turn to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, for nothing is impossible with him. May God bless you. Jesus said to the synagogue official, don't worry, have faith. Let us now turn to him with our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, Lord, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We now turn to our loving Father, knowing that he hears our prayers and he understands what we are asking. For monks and nuns, monasteries and convents, may they grow in holiness in numbers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in public office, may they uphold the law faithfully and govern wisely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For summer travelers, May they travel safely and find God in the beauty of creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this assembly, may they visit the sick and find healing themselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who have died, may they dwell in God's loving kingdom, especially Arcella Stevenson, who died this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those for whom this Mass is being offered, especially Patty Hilkert. We pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Father of all creation, we thank you for your understanding and hearing these prayers that we speak today. We ask you to hear the prayers that lie deep within our hearts and all the prayers that are with us forever and ever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Number 492, We Walk by Faith. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like you in all things but sin. 
so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Trusting in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray the words he has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each of you always. Let us share a sign of love and peace with one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My friends, now it is time for us to receive communion. If you are not going to physically receive communion, and to those who will be watching by video, let us now pray our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Number 344, give us, O Lord, number 344.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Number 732, for the healing of the nation. <laughs>